That's like good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning. Happy Tuesday to everybody. Yeah. Chicks rock your body. Okay. So um we have a lot of news today. A lot of stuff is happening. We're going to get to that in just a second. Um, if you guys haven't, you need to go to uh, fourpatriots.com slash chicks. You can get the, the deluxe three-month survival food kit and the peace of mind that you desperately crave and deserve. We all do right now. Yeah, we all do. You guys should do that. You should totally check it out. They have a lot of other stuff there too on their site, their awesome site. But um right now they've got that deluxe three months survival food kit, which everybody needs right now. If you don't have that right now, if you don't have three months of food, you should totally check that out for patriots.com slash chicks. So do that. Has there ever been a better time to go to for patriots.com slash no. chicks? I ask you, could no. anything else be going wrong? Oh my gosh, you guys, mm -hmm. I forgot to change my name. Um, you're married. Name today. <laughs> Let her be married today. Just be yourself. Okay. Everybody loves you. Everybody embrace the fact that she's just married today. You know? I, just, and I, I, say, I say just Mary as if that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm Mary enough or whatever. She's, <laughs> she's Mary today. You guys. Uh, I'm sorry about my lack of name. Wow. Mm -hmm. I had no, you know, because we, we had the little banner there for four Patriots and I just forgot. I we just were forgot. We were distracted by all the news. A lot of stuff going on today. Yeah, so I'm sorry about my lack of creativity. Well, you're today. grounded. Very, very you're grounded. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's not I'm grounded. You know, today, um, I had on the hat that you got me for now uh, for a birthday. I think you got it for my birthday. Which, the one which that one? says, Oh, happy day. Oh, yeah. And, and I had to take it that. off. Yeah. Cause as Cause soon it's... as I saw the news this morning, I was like, I can't out. I you can't wear, wear this hat. Like this mm -hmm. is so inappropriate. And so then I had to throw my hair into this horrible, Which, whatever this it is. It looks <laughs> like she's going to, to some ball with the, uh, with the Duke <laughs> with their hair today. That would be a really, really <laughs> sketch ball. <It's> very proper. <laughs> Her hair is very proper this Sketchest morning. ball ever of all time, if that was the case. <laughs> but anyway, that is the reason that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it sucks. So yeah, that it sucks when you have a really cute hat on and then you have to take your hat off because of the news of the because day. Because of the news. This is when yeah. we know we're ready for vacation, which by the way is next week, you guys. We're going to be on vacation next week and we desperately need to check out for a week. Oh my God. After this morning. So yeah. One thing you may not know about me and Daisy is that we both have an intense, perhaps not irrational fear of bridges. Oh, God. And it's bad. Yeah. It's it's real bad. I don't like them. And, of course, I'm moving to a place that is filled with them, but much smaller ones. Yeah. Um, and so if you have not seen the news this morning about the Baltimore, the key, the Baltimore Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. It's horrific. I'm going to show you video from it because you need to see what has happened. Um, and and we will get to that. We're going to talk about all the Sean Diddy Puff Daddy Diddly do raid, the raid yeah. that happened at his house. Mm -hmm. Trump's bond, the Ronna McDaniel stuff, still huge, huge fallout from <laughs> that. It's it's there's so much to get to. It's going to be a long show. So settle in, in. <laughs> get, get your bone buckle frog, in. get it. Um, okay. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks for making me feel better. Eileen is like, I live here too. And it's, they're no safer here. <laughs> okay. That's, that's fantastic. Awesome. We're going to have to Thank send you. Mox and vodka. It's, <laughs> it's fine. I mean, okay. So the, if you have not heard the news, uh, because it happened overnight, I guess, thankfully in that there were not more cars on the bridge when it collapsed. Um, but this happened, I think at around 1 30 AM, two o'clock AM, there was a gigantic cargo ship trying to make its way under the bridge. And this cargo ship ran straight into one of the pylon thingies that holds the bridge in place. And then like a stack of teeny sticks, it just completely fell. This is a bridge that is over a mile and a half long like it is enormous and so dozens as, as at least according to the latest reports dozens of cars just fell right into the river which is like 40 something degrees a semi. Um, it was a semi too yeah yeah a semi um mm -hmm. and so it's just a horrific story and and we can see what happened i've got three different angles to show you 
So we'll start with this first one that really, I don't like this one because the this is a um, montage, a video from just random people's cell phones that they captured. And the attitude of the people recording infuriates me. Like, I just remember, I mean, this is totally off topic, but I remember during 9-11 when I was watching the the first tower, I was watching TV when the first tower fell. And I remember feeling so like oddly embarrassed that I was the only one in my workplace who was crying. And like, I couldn't understand what I'm like, Oh my God, all those people. And I'm immediately a bucket of tears mm -hmm. and everybody else was watching. Like it was like, nobody else cried. And I thought, what's wrong with me? You know what I mean? Like, why am I the only one crying? And I, it brought me straight back to this when I heard these people. Cause I was like, there's a lack oh, of humanity. Yes. There is just the way that they're talking about what they're seeing. Mm -hmm. It's right. so gross, you guys. And so there's a couple different videos kind of smashed together that you'll hear. Here's the first one. We're right next to the key bridge. Oh, what the fuck? <sighs> like, what the all them people on the bridge just died, what dude. The fuck? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So this is a slower, obviously... I mean, my God, it just, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's my, heart. Oh, my God. The key bridge sinking, the bridge is gone. Holy hell. So here is video of what happened. Now you can see that this container ship loses power a couple of times. And so, cause at first you look at this and you're like, that thing is aiming for the structure right. that's holding up that bridge, yep. but you can see the power go out. Mm -hmm. And so I, who knows they, all the people on board that ship are fine and they are speaking to coast guard and they're like the, at the first presser this morning, um, they were saying there's no relation to terror. This was like a power. This was something that went wrong with this cargo ship. And so I, I don't know what to make of it, except that it just looks unbelievably bizarre that, oh my it, God. that it would go straight for that, that whatever that is called that holds up the bridge. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think we have one more angle where you can really see the lights. So, but again, it's not aimed correctly. <laughs> like it's not, it's not going where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So the lights are off and then you can see the power come back on briefly and it turns so suddenly. Like he's trying to miss it or I don't, I, know, I don't even know what he's doing or she. I, and I'm there's the power going out again. Oh my God. Somebody said that a container ship hit a bridge in Tampa last night. Is that true? Are you serious? Yeah. Is that true? So I can't. I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. And I. Wow. Yeah. And somebody mentioned that there's smoke coming out of this cargo ship, too. And so I don't know. You know, obviously, it's too early to know all of the details, except that this is a catastrophe. I mean, oh my, an it's, unimaginable catastrophe. It like, is unimaginable. This is, Oh my gosh. And so just, I want to share my screen so people know where this is. So that red dot uh, is the location of the bridge. And what I want, I'll expand it so you can see a better um, scale, but I wanted people to see what was close to it. So you can see giant Amazon fulfillment center, uh, the Home Depot distribution center, like all of these giant distribution centers right across this bridge. And then as we zoom out, you can see on a larger scale, where it was so it connects you know it connects it's not the only bridge but it is obviously going to be it's a huge connect, right oh, yeah it's major artery yeah it's it's big 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 yeah it's big, big. i can't my god and i just and we don't know how many people have been affected at this point we don't know how many people have no. died we don't know we just don't know it's just I, the most horrific it's thing. it's catastrophic oh absolutely catastrophic and you're right the people the the reaction of the people who were filming is is alarming.
Yeah, I just I get was so grossed out. She was like, dude, all those people just died. And I'm just like, yeah, it's... gross. I mean, I the way that I just that just really that was gross to me. That was really, really gross. Carol said that it's 11,000 cars a day. That is, I'm assuming that's how many go over that bridge. 11,000 I mean, a day. God, it was at night. I, I, I mean, if there was anything good out of it, you know, that's the one saving grace is it was because, yeah, I mean, this is a well-trafficked bridge. Mm -hmm. And we just have to hope that during this hour, it was not as well-trafficked, right? But like. Right. At 1.30 in the morning. It's just, oh my God, it's just unspeakably horrific. And, you know, unfortunately, um, if this were a Governor DeSantis state, you you could expect that the bridge, uh, a bridge would be reconstructed within quickly, a very, a very fast time. I don't mm -hmm. know how it's going to go in Baltimore. That place is a mess. Yeah. So that is that is fact. Fun. That is fact. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know something else that's fact, and that is that this stuff is the bomb. This is the Gen 90 from GenuCell. This is the anti-wrinkle treatment. And this this is XV. stuff, yeah, and this is XV. That Both of these products are currently in the best-selling package right now at GenuCell.com slash chicks. Open that up so people can see the creamy, delicious butteriness. The buttery goodness. The XV, the extra velvety. It's like a blizzard. That. See? <laughs> it's so thick. You can turn it upside down. It doesn't fall out. See? It's so, so amazing. Both of these products, killer products, this is these are included. They're not the only thing that's included in the bestseller package, but among the fantastic GenuCell products that are in the bestseller package, they're on sale right now during the GenuCell spring sale. The package also includes their under um, eye bag treatment, their puffiness serum. Um, fantastic products. I actually just used their my favorite uh, product, which is the Crystals, the microdermabrasion. A little it's too hard. A little too hard, <laughs> which is what I always <laughs> do it smells so good and it like feels so good that i scrub it extra hard and then i end up like peeling actual parts of my face off of my face <laughs> just <laughs> don't, don't do, do it that hard <laughs> don't do that you like um, it too much <laughs> but check it out at genucell.com slash thank you guys so much for the super stickers michelle Bo michelle boyd <clears throat> says god bless all those souls i'm sobbing as this breaks my heart it's, i know i've been a mess all morning it's just it's just so awful. awful so awful so awful um tom j thank you tom says for anyone newer to cotr like me you have to go back to episode on october 29th of 2020 titled warning there is crying in this one the ups and downs were amazing with a strong drink <laughs> Oh my gosh, you remember that that's, the, the, that's, you the, one, that's oh. the one that I announced that I was leaving radio. That was a tough one. Very, very tough. I love yeah. that he knows of I that. I can't episode. believe you know that one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we've been known to have very up and down mm -hmm. and we will today. Like I've been, you know, we're obviously talking about something super grave, but later on in the show, we'll be laughing as we normally do because uh, it's all we can do, you guys. How else are we supposed to deal with all of these crises? Exactly. I, I just don't know. I, I don't know. Um, Karen Serencioni, thank you so much. Karen says, we drive over the FSK Bridge often, and this is terrifying. So glad my daughter didn't go to a concert in D.C. last night, or she <sighs> could have been on it. Oh, oh my, God. my gosh. Oh, my I gosh. Oh, my God. I just... Yeah, this is going to be we're going to hear awful things, um, you know, today and in the, you know, in the days following, we're going to hear awful, awful. And things then more of this. the backstory, like I want to hear who who was who was the captain of the ship? What was going on? What happened? Like, how, how did this happen? Because when I saw this this morning, I was just like, how how does something like this happen? You know? Yeah, I don't. So I, we need I need more information. We all do. We I have questions. Need some Lots answers. of questions. Right. Yeah. And uh, Caitlin says that the Bay Bridge is one of the scariest bridges in the U.S. All bridges are scary. All oh, of them yeah. Scary. It's it, I, ones listen, that look I, like they're made of matchsticks. That's the scariest. Yeah, of all. I, I mm. have like three fears and it's it's heights, bridges and mediocrity. Those are my fears. And that's it. But bridges. Oh, my God. Bridges, man. Don't like ever since Mothman prophecies like I cannot. Do not cannot like deal bridges. with the bridges. Cannot. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of other news to get to. So let's get to that stuff. Yesterday, I made the mistake of saying, oh, today's the day that RFK Jr. is going to announce his running mate. I was wrong. It's today. Yeah, it's so it's we still today. don't know. <laughs> 
Right. And it'll probably be like five o'clock today is when he announces it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know uh, who it's going to be. It was interesting. I saw on Twitter today some very interesting chitter chatter on a post from RFK where he was talking about, you know, the big announcement. And there were lots of conservatives who were piping in saying, I haven't yet made my choice of who I'm going to vote for, whether it's going to be Trump or RFK Jr. It will depend on who he chooses. And so a lot of these folks, and again, because people are like, oh, he's going to, you know, RFK is going to take more votes away from Biden. That may be true, but he's definitely going to take some Republican votes. There's no question about that. And anybody who's thinking otherwise is kidding themselves. Um, So a lot of these people who were tweeting this kind of stuff were saying, if he chooses someone to his left, I will not, I'll vote for Trump. If he chooses someone to his right in a sign of unity, I will vote for RFK. Yeah, this is why he is a threat. And this is why when we said, like, if he chooses a Tulsi, that Mm. is going to be kind of like, oh my, because Tulsi could go either way. Tulsi could be on the Trump ticket or she could be on the RFK ticket. And so it's going to be very interesting. I, she's got to go somewhere. (laughs) I feel like she's seriously because she's been floated as a possibility for both camps. So don't you think that that chick's going to go somewhere? I mean, really, if she doesn't, I'm going to be very surprised. Well, she was on with Tucker. Tucker just interviewed her. I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know what they what was said about that. Um, But she she's still out there doing the thing. And it's and listen, it's there is some substance to the theory that if he does put somebody on the ticket that is more of a conservative, like a right leaner that he will pull, you know, right wing people to his side. Mm-hmm. Cause they're, I, and not me, but cause I know that he's still a liberal. Right. And if, and if he gets into office, he will govern like a liberal, but he will president like a liberal cause he is liberal right. <laughs> at the end of the day he is, but he, but he's going to appeal to a lot of right wingers who are disillusioned because they're out there. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, there's, there is no doubt about that. And all you need to do is just look at the people right. talking about it, all the chattering about mm-hmm. it on social media. These people exist. They, it's just fact. And so you can want to deny it all you want, but it's just, he is a yeah. threat to both sides of this ticket. Yeah. So. And then just wait till they debate if, and when they debate, we'll see what happens then because yeah, if he's he allowed is, to debate. Uh huh. Right and a whole other thing. Uh, Trump had himself a win yesterday. And if you haven't heard, the bond that we've been talking about for weeks now, how is he going to come up with it? What's Letitia James going to do? Is she going to take his properties? Is she going to seize his bank accounts? Blah, blah, blah. All of that put to bed now because of this recent ruling by a New York appeals court, which reduced that $454 million bond down to $175 million, well within Trump's budget. Um, So this was a huge, huge win, and it prevents Letitia from getting her grubby, disgusting, horrible hands on any of his properties. They did say he's got to come up with that money in 10 days. I don't think that's a problem at all. And this decision actually goes way further than just the bond amount. In fact, there were more decisions made, more uh, Engeron uh, decisions that were turned over, including the fact that Engeron had tried to bar Trump from serving as an officer or director of a New York company for three years. Um, They overturned that. They also, Engeron tried to say that uh, Don Jr. and Eric Trump would not be able to serve as officers or directors of New York companies for two years. Overturned that because those are bullshit, nonsense. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's just so stupid. All of this is so arbitrary. Mm Mm-hmm. That, that, the amounts are arbitrary. It's like, oh, you uh, give us 400 something million. Oh no, let's, let's lower that to a hundred something million. I mean, it's just like, okay. (laughs) All of it's so stupid and arbitrary. And, and the American people know that, which goes to the, Frank Luntz made that point yesterday. What was it? Two days ago when he made that point, it's just going to embolden Donald Trump. All of this emboldens him. Mm -hmm. That's all this does. Well, and his uh, reaction um, when asked, as soon as this decision came down, he did a presser and one of the reporters asked him, you know, what are you going to put up as collateral for this new bond amount? And here was how that conversation went. What's your collateral for the bond? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. What did he say? Cash. <laughs> yeah. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, which but see, is a lot so of, badass, actually. It's and which is great, but a lot of people, you know, there's been a lot of chatter about like his net worth and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And like, if, like, say I say to somebody, I'm I, my net worth is five billion dollars. God, that'd be awesome. So great. But if that I said if, if I said my net worth is is five billion dollars, it's not like I have five billion in cash, right? And a lot of morons out there think that about Trump. That's not how it works, you know. And and Mark Cuban even got on TV and defended him when it came to that. And you know, Mark that pained Mark Cuban to have to do that because <laughs> right. he doesn't because he doesn't like Trump. And so, but he was like, "Listen, don't be an idiot. That's not how any of this works. You don't just if, if you're worth." is, is 5 billion. It's not like you just have 5 billion in cash in the bank. That's not how like in your checking account. Right. That's, <laughs> I mean, but shouldn't we kind of know that? I mean, it's as, I mean, I'm not a financial analyst or expert by all means, but I know that in theory, you know, that if your net worth is X, you don't have X in cash. Right. And neither does Trump. So, but he does and has bragged for a long time about how much cash he has. And so, and, and he just did it again. And I believe him like he recently, even before this decision yesterday, he was saying, I've got 400 and something, I've got 400 million in cash. And so that's when Jessica Tarlov was being such an idiot. And she was like, well, if he has 400 million, then why doesn't he have 454 million? As if that's like, just, you know, the. 20 bucks or something. <laughs> I mean, it was such a ridiculous thing for her to say, but he definitely has 175 million. And so he's not going to have any trouble paying this bond. And it is making the MSNBC talking heads crazy rage. Like you have not Make seen them, them rage since he mm-hmm. first won his first election. And so this guy, I've never seen him before. This Tristan Snell guy so mad you guys it's delicious Uh, honestly this is so infuriating i don't even know what to do i don't even know if i care what the process is that these judges are arriving at whatever it is it's flawed i can tell you that much i mean david put it well it's this is a different process for, for for this person we have decided that he gets his own private court of justice he has a private plane he has a he has private clubs yeah, that he lives in. Out loud. You know, apparently, you know, he he basically fashioned himself his own private militia to try to take over the Capitol. You know, now he's getting uh, his own private system of justice. This is an absolute travesty. It would not happen for anybody else. Anybody else, it would be like, sorry, buddy, you lost. Pay up. For him, he gets his own set of rules. I would pay I mean, the hundred. I would oh pay the hundred seventy five million in quarters, and I put it on. Our- yeah. Okay. Pennies. Put it on her front lawn, like in dump trucks. I just deliver it in dump trucks and just to put it on her front. I just, here you go. Is that good for you? Biatch. <laughs> there it is in cash. Oh my I didn't God. say what kind of cash, but there it is in cash. It's just so rich for that guy to be like, he gets his own system of justice. Yeah. That's yeah. why we're in this freaking mess to begin with. <laughs> exactly. Cause you guys God. have made it that way. Yeah, exactly. So Trump obviously took to Truth Social um, to give an update on this and said that the judge has refused to obey the decision of the appellate division relative to the statute of limitations. This is a confrontation between a judge and the, the, and those that rule above him, a very bad situation in which to place New York State and the rule of law. He has disrespected the appellate division and it's very clear, precise ruling. He should be made to do so and at the same time release the gag order. This is the fifth time in this case he has been overturned, which is a record. His credibility and that of Letitia James has been shattered. We will abide by the decision of the appellate division and post either a bond, equivalent securities, or cash. This also shows how ridiculous and outrageous his original decision was at $450 million. I did nothing wrong. New York should never be put in a position like this again. Businesses are fleeing. Violent crime is flourishing. It's very important that this be resolved in its totality as soon as possible. Thank you. Yeah, that last bit, he's he's dead on. He's He's right. 100% correct. I mean, yeah. they are fleeing. They think this, everybody that owns a business or that does business in New York is looking at this and going, this is such bull crap. They know. People, Bye. reasonable people know. Yeah. You know. Even Democrats know. Even yeah. people that hate Trump know. This is all bull crap. And meanwhile, to make uh, the liberals even angrier, Truth Social doing, doing very, very well um, and probably per- Potentially, Donald Trump looks like he's on the verge of a massive financial win. His social media baby, Truth Social, 
is finally about to go public after years of legal delays, a merger between Trump Media and a blank check company called Digital World Acquisition. The higher this stock goes, the richer Donald Trump is, at least on paper, because this deal calls for Donald Trump to own about 79 million shares of the new company. So at these prices, we're talking about a stake that is worth more than $3 billion. I'll call. Well, look, another smart move by Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And people <laughs> don't want to say that he's a good businessman. I know, right? <laughs> right? It's like, and this, listen, you know, you know, I talk about karma. Well, this is karma in action. People mm. are just attacking him on all sides. And he's like, ah, this might look at, I'm going to be <laughs> worth four. This is worth four billion. Like it's going to be, this is it. This is, this yeah. is, car you cannot just keep attacking this guy for basically no reason other than the fact that you don't want him to be president. Right. That's what they're doing. So this is, this is what's happening. He made another good business deal. Robin Zeka, thank you. Robin says the Tampa Bridges was 40 years ago and they are using it as a comparison. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Eugene Heiger, thank you. Eugene says the harbor master is responsible to bring the large cargo ships into port. However, if the bo boat lost power, control would be hard. Yeah. I, I can't. Mean, it's, that's a massive, massive, it's like a city on a bus, uh, on, a, <sighs> on a ship. And so it's not like, you know, you can't turn them it's not like just steering like this or like pushing the brake <laughs> you know what i mean it's a whole process and so if there was some reason that the boat lost power that's the thing what is the reason how did that happen why did it keep flickering so many questions so right so many all the questions. all the questions sandra on sig thank you very much for that super sticker appreciate that appreciate you guys and uh, speaking <clears throat> of you guys we i got an email that we need to talk about because this is awesome about our friends at healthy cell who by the way if you guys didn't realize they have this amazing joint health and mobility gel pack if you don't know healthy cell healthy cell provides all kinds of different supplements for, that are so good for your body. They are absorbed 165% better than regular tablets, pills, or capsules. And they all come in this amazing little gel pack that you just take and you're swallowing literally like 10 to 12 pills worth of uh, vitamins and supplements in this one gel pack. And they're delicious. And so they've got this for joint health and mobility, which is fantastic. They've got one for heart and vascular health. They've got a daily, uh, you know, multivitamin. Immune. And then our favorite, which is the healthy hair, skin, and nails. No, this stuff is bomb. We got an email from Vanessa Denner about this, and it's super long. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, but she she said that your story about using the healthy hair, skin, and nails made me made her think of her mother-in-law, Anne. And Anne has been struggling with hair thinning and falling out. She was feeling super self-conscious. Her hairdresser recommended one of the hair growth shampoos. Um, but she was complaining about the price of those she's saying she couldn't feel any difference. Her hair was still continuing to fall out. So on the day that you were talking on our podcast about how your hair was growing and it was coming in thicker, that's when she decided to order a three month supply for her mother-in-law. And, um, day one, she said she loved the taste. She was very leery about how it would taste, but she really, really liked it. And then on day 29, she said her nails had gotten a lot stronger. Her skin was looking amazing and that the hair loss had slowed down. And she was so hopeful that this would be the key to helping her get some of her thickness and length back that she's already going to be, she was set to uh, subscribe as soon as her three month supply is gone. I so love that. Just, and I love no that she did testimonial. And I love that she did that for her mother-in-law. I know. Isn't that? That. Sweet, what a sweet daughter-in-law. Yeah. I uh, know. Very lovely. So if you guys want to try any of their amazing products, check them out at healthycell.com slash chicks. And remember, when you use promo code chicks, you're going to get 20% off of your first order. So <laughs> healthycell.com slash chicks. Catherine Lazaretti, thank you. Catherine says, hi, girls. Could the geomagnetic storm have affected the navigation of the cargo ship? I don't know. I don't know. Again, I all mean, these questions. We're probably this I bet in the coming week a lot of a lot of answers to a lot of questions will be given. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. At least I hope that's the case. Alan Gratton, thank you. Alan says, remember when the libs were laughing at Trump for starting his own social media? They are not yeah. laughing now. <laughs> I know. They laugh at him for a lot of things. Yeah. And then it's, it's true. like, and you every it, I feel like every other day there's a video of him being right about something that they laughed at him for what mm -hmm. two years ago, three years ago, four years, you know? Yeah. 
Well, and Dana White uh, was recently on with Lex Friedman talking about Trump. Of course, they're very, very good friends. And um, I don't know how Trump is going to feel about the fact that Dana told the story. But Dana told a story that he has not ever told before about whether Trump ever gets rattled by all of the like the entire shitstorm that he's dealing with on a daily basis. And I thought this was really interesting insight into the man that is Trump on the phone as a friend and be like, hey, you good? How you doing? Mm -hmm. Unfazed, unfazed, like nothing's going on. And they'll start talking to me about this and that and all this other shit. One time. <clears throat> There's only been one time I've never talked about this publicly, but one time I called him and he was not good. He, he was a mess and I've never heard him like that. And I've never seen him like that when uh, Ivana died. The only time I've ever seen him fucked up. Obviously, as soon as I heard it, I reached out and I have never. They look at all the stuff that's gone on with Trump, all the bad stuff that they say. They're trying to attack him. They're trying to ruin him. Unfazed. I called him that day and he was, that's the first time I've ever seen that guy busted up and, and, and not good. But that says something that that's the only time. 100%. That guy is, I mean, walking through he does fire. Not get rattled. He, he will walk through fire. He's an absolute savage. <laughs> I mean, listen, he, I, I understand why. Trump can't show his vulnerability ever because look at what they put him through, you know, but if you can look back and try to remember a time where you got to sort of see citizen Trump, right. Mm -hmm. And it was like husband Trump and dad Trump and citizen Trump. And he was funny. I mean, like he used to do like guest spots on TV shows and stuff like that. And he had, yeah. a sense, he has a sense of humor. He's a funny guy. He's like a normal guy as normal as a billionaire can be. Right. <laughs> but he does a great job of protecting that guy and not showing him very often. And I, and obviously that's because of everything that they've put him through, but mm -hmm. it, man, it'd be nice if, if we could see him more, but I blame the left for that. I blame them yeah. entirely because I don't and I don't blame him at all because he probably protects that at all costs. He protects his own identity, his like himself, because they have wounded him like they that yeah. citizen part of him, that actual personal part of him. They don't allow that person to come out because he's got to protect that at all costs. And so God bless him for that, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I appreciated that there was an actual human story about yeah. him. You know what I mean? Because we don't ever get that to your point and there's good reason for it. He can't unfortunately, it. Yeah, he can't, he's not allowed. Unfortunately, he does continue inexplicably to just sort of step on his own dick. And, you know, I've had a problem with this <laughs> with him before. Thomas Massey addressed this yesterday. For some reason, uh, and uh, the only thing that people can come up with is that this, this gal, Laurel Lee, Representative Laurel Lee, um, who supported DeSantis in the primaries and then turned around and endorsed Trump as soon as DeSantis was out. Trump is trying to primary her because she didn't give him loyalty from the beginning. So he actually tweeted um, just a couple days ago. He was like, are there any great MAGA Republicans looking to run against Laurel Lee in Florida's 15th? If so, please step forward. And so Thomas Massey was like, can you just not... <laughs> This is yeah. unhelpful, unwarranted. She's a conservative, thoughtful member of the Judiciary Committee. She endorsed DeSantis for president and then endorsed Trump when DeSantis got out of the race. More of my colleagues should call out these ridiculous bullying tactics. And why does he do this? Or just stay why? out of it. Or just don't say anything. Like, focus on your campaign and just right. stay out of, just stay out of right. this completely. Just don't say anything. That was and just, then I don't was, don't hurt a current sitting right congresswoman who, by all accounts, at least according to Thomas Massey, who is more conservative, conservative than probably everybody. Right. I mean, is, if, is if she's got his endorsement, then mm -hmm. just shut your face for yeah. God's sake. Because the last thing we need is to lose more conser actual conservatives. Right. I mean, yeah, I, this I is hear the you. Stuff that makes I, me I hear you on this. I'd like, I do. I hear you. I don't understand that either. I just wish, I wish it would just stop when it just, I know. Just don't say anything. <laughs> like, just don't say anything at all. And then also, um, people are giving him a lot of crap for winning a couple of tournaments at his own golf course, like winning championships. 
And so because he is so Trumpy, <laughs> I mean, he's Trump, right? He's so Trumpy that he like posted about himself winning championships at his own golf course. And it gave Joe Biden an opportunity to troll him. What do you think of this troll? I, I can't decide if this is effective or not. <laughs> But Joe Biden's like, congrats, Donald, quite the accomplishment there that you that you won the club championship trophy and would, the senior club championship trophy. I would write Joe Biden back and be like, nice diapers, Joe. <laughs> did you shit in them today? Because I'm sure that you did. <laughs> I mean, I would I would troll him right back if I were <laughs> Donald. In fact, I'm surprised you didn't troll him right back. I'd be like, you have to wear special shoes to walk, dude. I'm actually walking 18 holes and I don't have to do that. I can I can actually walk on my own without help. I can do that. <laughs> I don't need somebody to feed me pudding, you old geezer. So I would troll him right back if I were. I He's not on Twitter right though, so that's well, why he won't. I get somebody. I get somebody else to do it. If I, you know, it's <laughs> Donald Trump. You know what I mean? He's, we know he's got a hundred mil in cash sitting around. Pay somebody to do it. You know, get us. Well, I'm to sure do he it. goes. He goes after him like crazy on Truth Social. It's not to I say mean, that he doesn't push thing. back on like, Biden. Go after him. He's gonna troll him right back, is what I do because that's ridiculous. Like he's trolling him for playing 18 holes of golf and winning on his own golf course. Give me a. That is like the lamest troll ever, especially coming from <laughs> Joe Biden. Come on. But you have to admit that bragging about winning a championship at a golf course you own is a little ridiculous. I mean, right? I, I mean, I come on. I don't know. I mean, it's it's him. It's just it's very, it's very on, him. It's very on brand. Completely on brand. It's There's totally no question about brand. it. So for Joe Biden <laughs> to go after him and be like, quite the accomplishment. What have you accomplished in three years? Except to destroy everything in your past. Right. Which is exactly why he needs to keep his freaking mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's an interesting fellow in Texas who has just decided to enter the presidential race. Oh my and so, God. You guys, it's like, you it's have like Evan, Evan, what's his name? Evan McMullins, Mc, McMuffin. What was his name? Evan <laughs> McMullen. Evan, yeah. Evan McMuffin is what I want to call him. He like came in at exactly the same time the last go round. Remember? He's like, I'm not going to do any of the things. I'm just going to slip in here at the 23rd mile of the marathon. I hate it when people do this. <laughs> well, I think you might appreciate this one though, because this one really? is kind of a. Yeah, this one is a little bit different from all the rest. This is, and it's not going anywhere, but I just thought it was of interest. Howdy, gentlemen. Running for president How y'all doing? isn't easy. Are they doing it? But a catchy name. Literally anybody else? Yeah. That's my name. Is a start. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, how's it going? So what do I call you, Mr. Else? No, he's not joking. My name is literally anybody else, and I'm running for president of the United States. <laughs> and it says so right here on his Texas license. You know, it's not necessarily about me as a person, but it's about literally anybody else as an idea. Literally anybody else is a seventh grade math teacher from North Richland Hills, Army veteran. Howdy, sir. A 35-year-old now running for president in his first year of eligibility. Donald Trump. Joe Biden, they're under it would be literally anybody else. And the reason why 300 million people <laughs> we can last name you might Elf. find relatable. There really should be some outlet for folks like me who are just so fed up with this constant power grab between the two parties yeah, that well. just has no benefit to the common okay. person. Before he was Mr. Else, he was Dustin Eby in the eyes of the state, a voter with centrist beliefs and wholly dissatisfied with the current candidates, Republicans and Democrats are offering for the White House in November. So he changed his name and began his candidacy. Who are you voting for? Kind of as a protest. Literally anybody else for president. It's a real, it's a real item. Statistically, Mr. Else doesn't stand a chance. In Texas, just to get on the ballot as an independent, he needs more than 113,000 signatures from non-primary voters voters by mid-May. You satisfied with Trump and Biden? We have a third option. This is him trying to grab some of those signatures before a star. In Texas, game. people yeah. are like, you don't follow much? <laughs> Politics <Dude>. ain't easy. <laughs> he has a TCU hat on. Did you see that? I think he had a TCU Texas, not. Texas Christian hat on. Okay, so um, that guy's voting for RFK, just so you know. Or maybe he'll, he'll just write, write in, in himself. Literally anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Else is the last name. 
literally anybody. It's the first and middle name. <laughs> that was really, yeah. So this, I like it. Trinocula said, bless your heart. That's what we basically, <laughs> that's what we say in Texas for sure. But yeah, I, but this is the kind of guy though, like the 35 year old, that demo that's disillusioned by the two old dudes. Mm. That's who we're talking about when we talk about people who are going to vote for RFK. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that guy's a Texan. If you think that those people don't exist, they exist. He's probably going to, people like him will vote for RFK. Without a I, doubt. Because Without I'm sorry, but when, doubt. when you tell me that there are centrists that still exist, I'm like, who are they? Well, <laughs> they're literally anybody else. <laughs> Connie Cannell, thank you so much. Connie says, I told my husband last night about paying New York in pennies. He rolled his eyes. <laughs> Love you, chicks. Yeah, I think it's a <laughs> smart choice. It is Karen Elliott, idea. thank you very much for that super sticker. Tracy Carroll, thank you. Tracy says, hey, ladies, due to my menopausal insomnia, I finally get to catch you live from Southern California. Yippee, I just can't start my day without your sunny little face. Yay. Oh, my God. That's what that's what how we do our show is because of menopausal insomnia. That's why we get up so early, too. And Kristen Thompson. Thank you. Kristen says, hey, chicks, I'm headed to Indiana to bring my daughter on a few college tours and then over to Iowa to see family. Mock, I will wave as I drive by. Love you. ladies. Yay. Bye. College tours in Indy. Go see Purdue. Boiler up. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get to the next big topic, which is something that we talked about kind of at length yesterday, and that is Ronna McDaniel joining NBC. The fallout. I mean, I thought we would be done with that conversation yesterday, but mm -hmm. my God, the fallout has been unbelievable. And I got to tell you, if I were Ronna McDaniel right now, I would be like absolutely mortified. Horrified. mortified. Like she has to go to work and show up and see these people in the break room. Can you imagine? Oh my God. What is like, that even like? Everyone how, hates her. How awkward is that? Like you're at the water cooler and everybody's like, I hate you. I don't want you on my show. I don't want to be near you. Like you're disgusting. You're the worst yeah. human on the planet. It's like, Hey, you want to go to lunch? <laughs> hey, where do you want to go? You want to go Mexican? Like maybe have a more. Oh no, no. Okay. All right. Can you point me to the restroom? <laughs> like any conversation no. she's having is I not going well. I can't point you to the restroom. I hate you. I mean, this is, <laughs> could you imagine? And I don't want to defend her. No. I also cannot stand her. Mm -hmm. And so being put in this position is really annoying. Um, but we have to show you some of the reaction because it is out of control. It's delicious. Oh, my God. We will <laughs> kick it off with Mika and Joe. A former RNC chair, Ronna McDaniel. Well, uh, she was on Sunday's Meet the Press. It was her first appearance since, the NBC, and since NBC News hired her as a political analyst. Uh, I know you won't be surprised to know that we've been inundated with calls this weekend as have, uh, uh, most people connected with this network about NBC's decision to hire her. Uh, we learned about the hiring when we read about it in the press on Friday. Uh, we weren't asked our opinion of the hiring, but if we were, oh we would have strongly objected to it for several re oh, reasons, you even? Uh, including, but not limited to, as lawyers might say, Ms. McDaniel's role in Donald Trump's fake elector scheme and her pressuring election officials to not certify election results oh while God. Donald Trump was on the phone. To be clear, oh, we believe NBC News should seek out conservative no, Republican don't. voices to provide no, balance don't. in their election coverage. That's bullshit. But it should be conservative Republicans, not a person who used her position of power to be an anti-democracy election denier. And we hope NBC will reconsider its decision. Uh, it goes without saying that she will not be a guest on Morning Joe in her capacity as a paid contributor. And I mean, if nobody's going to have her on their shows, then what was the point of hiring her? I would, if I were her, I'd be like, well, I mean, go ahead and pay out my contract then and I'll just stay home. <laughs> I'll just take a nice little payout. Thanks for uh, hiring me. Well, since nobody's going to have me on their shows to participate, what's the point of being well, here? Well, I think NBC allegedly, apparently will have her. It's MSNBC that won't. That's not going to happen. And have so, her. well, you'll God, hear more about that. But like, but but a lot of the reaction that that I have is from the MSNBC folks. 
And so, and it just gets uglier and uglier. Joy Reid um, also just like losing her mind about it. And this. look, and this is not about not having Republicans on. Right. Uh, my oh, good crap. friend, Michael Steele, is the former also RNC chair. Oh yes. Who God. guest hosts this show yes. and is my friend. One of the, the, the best broadcasters on this network is Nicole Wallace. Yes. Who is a brilliant broadcaster oh. and a former Republican who worked oh for a president. God. I literally was in a campaign former to work Republican. against <laughs> George W. Bush. Yes. It is not about that. No. There, we, we welcome Republican voice. I wish more right. Republicans. I want Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney to get right here yeah. and come talk oh to me. My God. The reality oh my is, God. this isn't a difference of opinion. She literally backed an illegal scheme to steal an election in the state of Michigan. Right. It's not about partisanship. We have to be pro-democracy. That's and right. that's the That's the goal here. And she, you know, it's fine to be, have your own views. Absolutely. But you can't have your own reality. And we all know that the 2020 election was free and fair. And she couldn't even say it on Sunday. She's still, She's not still saying, saying there are problems with it. The problems were, was a global pandemic. And that's what happens <laughs> yeah. in a global oh pandemic. God, I mean, that was really, I do think, and I would also add that the, the road to authoritarianism mm. is paved with people like Rana, people who repeat really? the lies they know are not true. They are, they don't, they absolutely do not want any Republicans, which is funny because Ron is not a Republican. <laughs> you know what I mean? They want so, the Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney yeah, and Mitt Romney's they, of the world. They want Liz Cheney to be on there. This is what's so funny. Like we want the Republicans, just the right ones. Right. <laughs> Give me a break. These it's people. so bad. The pearl clutching. So bad. Ugh. Oh my God. And so, uh, Rachel. Rachel Maddow went heart. on a tear as well. And she's the one that spills the beans that the entire MSNBC network is not going to have Rana on any of their shows. Understanding that MSNBC's leadership did not object to Rana McDaniel being hired by NBC News when the matter first arose. But when the hiring was announced and MSNBC staff essentially unanimously and instantly expressed outrage, our leadership at MSNBC heard us, understood, and adjusted course. We were told this weekend in clear terms, Ronna McDaniel will not be on our air. Ronna McDaniel will not be on MSNBC. And I say that and give you that level of detail because there has been an effort since by other parts of the company to muddy that up in the press and make it seem like that's not what happened at MSNBC. I can assure you that is what happened at MSNBC. Ronna McDaniel will not appear on MSNBC. So says our boss since Saturday, and it has never been anything other than clear. And I will also say, you know, if, if you care what I think about this, I will tell you the fact that Ms. McDaniel is on the payroll at NBC News to me, that is inexplicable. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hire a like a, a wise guy. You wouldn't hire a made man like a mobster. My God, to work at a DA's office, right? <laughs> you you wouldn't hire a pickpocket to work as a TSA screener. I don't know, as Democrats. And so I, I find the decision to put her on the payroll ex inexplicable. And I, and I hope they will reverse their decision. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, this is she's such a the high priestess of journalism who won't even put Donald Trump on the air because right. she believes in democracy so much as she clutches her pearls. Rachel Maddow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Give me a break. These I people just feel like outrage. this. Is I just I, it's so ridiculous. They're all ridiculous. I don't think they're going to keep her, though. Like this is this is yeah, a bigger. A nice She'll get a payout. Maybe. I mean, she's not done anything yet. She's been yeah, on but, one show. But listen, these people, they get contracts. And then what do they get? They have to pay her out of her contract. That's what happens in some of these media contracts. They'll pay her out of her contract. She'll walk away with like a little severance. And she'll live happily ever after. This is the thing. We reward oh bad behavior anyway, right? This is what <laughs> we do in this country. Like... Yeah, and they are all hypocrites, aren't they? Oh my god! Especially the, Rachel the amount Maddow. Of hypocrisy! It's, it's unbelievable. Just, it is, isn't it? Oh and they were god. talking about Nicole Wallace being uh, a former Republican, like one of the best journalists. So she also losing her mind about this. Oh my god! She begins this clip with a little piece of Rana's uh, interview on NBC with Kristen Welker. Do you think it's fair to say there were problems in 2020? And to say that does not mean he's not the legitimate so Rana, president. When you there were no problems. 
But what? what? What we've also said to election deniers is not just they can do that on our airwaves, but that they can do that as one of us, as badge-carrying employees of NBC News, as paid contributors to our sacred airwaves. NBC sacred. It's sacred, you guys. The airwaves there are sacred. <laughs> I mean, it's like church, basically. Oh, my God. Being at MSNBC. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, it's it's the pinnacle of journalism. <laughs> It is really. They're just God, these people are loony. <laughs> and of course, the view uh, also weighed in. Sarah Haynes is that her name? The blonde Sarah Haynes. I don't. I um, don't know any. I just. I know Whoopi and Joy, which she's the, the other one. The antithesis of actual Joy <laughs> is Joy, <laughs> or Whoopi for that or matter, or Whoopi, <laughs> or Sunny, or Sunny for that matter. Right. Uh -huh. uh, Sarah, on the other hand, she can fit her name. And mm -hmm. here is what she said. And sorry, Sunny, in the, the when they announced the hire, they said we do need to represent more voices. I agree with that. But you cannot have election deniers being uh, given these types of roles in major network news. She was someone that, you know, continues to actually plant while saying she believes uh, President Biden was elected fairly also kind of towing the line with some stories about things that weren't right. And when you have 60 court cases that say there was no evidence otherwise, you have to come, questioning election is fine. Denying every result that proves you wrong is not fine. Right. So I, I think that the only sketchy thing that happened in that election was when the former president asked for someone, the, the, um, the secretary of state in Georgia to find 11,000 votes. So let's come clean on what was sketchy about the election. Well, and. But, but, okay, but wait a second. If given the chance, just to be devil's advocate here, if given the chance, MSNBC would hire both Stacey Abrams and Hillary Clinton, both of whom are election deniers. Yeah. They would hire both those broads. So Easily, shut up. quickly. So shut up with this whole, oh my God, she's an election denier. You can't hire an election. Just shut up. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that and everything to do with the fact that she is she was involved with the RNC. And she wasn't your pick. You know what I mean? She was she didn't fit into the mold that MSNBC wants her to fit into. That's mm. what it is. It has nothing to, this whole election denier thing. It's like if Democrats or Democrat women deny an election, it's OK. It's all right, especially if she's writing pornographic novels. It's fine. <laughs> and if she's Hillary Clinton, it's fine. Totally you fine. Know? But totally uh, fine. Give me a break. Well, and they're even still coming out with stories about how much, how many problems there actually were totally. during the 2020 election. There were a lot of problems. So for yeah, Nicole, Nicole Wallace to be like, there were no problems. There were no problems. Oh look my at, God. Look, look into my eyes. Oh my God. I, there were she's no. one of those people that Ugh. I like extra, extra loathe. Loathe. Yeah. Absolutely so hard. The worst. Um, let's get to some voices of reason if we could, because that was a lot of crazy to There's deal really with. a lot to handle. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> but Dana Perino um, was talking about this ridiculous, the, the as, especially the charge and the way that they're going on and on and on about like people, if you question the election at all, then somehow you're just the dregs of society. Yeah. And Dana Perino pushed back on that hard. Dana McDaniel has a part in what happened with January 6th. This is being investigated. Oh, I would just say, right. I just want to say one thing. If you watch that interview with Rana, and if you watch what happened with Jim Jordan on Leslie Stahl last yeah. night on 60 Minutes, you see there's a shifting in the media on one particular issue, which is you can believe that the election was won by Biden. I do. I've said that all along from the beginning. But I also think that there were, of course, obviously some problems within the election when you had the election during COVID with state laws that were changed immediately. And so all of a sudden, if you say, yeah, of course, there were things that were not great and we should fix those things. You're an election denier. That doesn't that doesn't work. But you watch the media is trying to shift a little bit so that everybody who says we should make sure that you know ballot harvesting is not abused, then you're a, an election denier. That's not the that's not the but case. I mean, I. Yeah, that's she's absolutely case. she's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that about democracy? <laughs> <laughs> right? Commies, freaking commies, man. Now, I was not expecting for Geraldo to be on the side of reason on this particular issue. And yet he appeared on News Nation with Chris Cuomo and actually was. Like everyone you just named. I don't know Chuck Todd, but uh, Mika and Joe and, uh, I, and I heard Nicole Wallace uh, <laughs> uh, said something bad against uh, Rona McDaniel. I mean, the whole idea is that they were hiring her to be the ultimate insider. 
And here she gets washed away. She gets drowned by this tsunami of pretentious bullshit. Really, all <laughs> of these people that have a stick up their behinds, how dare they? And, and, and for Mika to say NBC shouldn't hire them, when, when does she become management? When did she become the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the arbiter of who got hired and who doesn't get hired? Uh, and, and Chuck Todd, I don't remember his years, his nine years at Meet the Press as being exactly triumphant. Uh, you know, she is the ultimate insider. And to say that they don't want to hire her now because of election denialism, well, then you don't want half the country to watch right. your network because half the uh, country is Republican, more or less, and they they believe a lot of them, or at least they've convinced themselves about the uh, the election being, uh, you know, uh, uh, fraudulent or whatever it is. Now, I think that she's wrong. I think that the Republican Party is going off the cliff. But this, the fact is they hired her to be who she is, who she was. And for them now, these other talent, uh, you know, some of them uh, pass their prime to 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 go after her. <laughs> And then they won't have her. No, I, I think that's that's baloney. I mean, look, the, he, I was waiting for him to like rip his shirt off and be like, <laughs> I'm going to take a selfie. I right. love that he's calling anybody else past his prime. I know. <laughs> I know he's like 100 years old. Geraldo, please. I know. Please. Just just stop. <laughs> Stop her all day. Um, and then lastly, before we move on to the next topic, Joe Concha, I think he was on with Stuart Varney. Um, he Stuart. gave a great summary about why this whole narrative is so completely redonkulous. Here's Joe. On these people are impossible to quantify. So <laughs> apparently before any contributor gets hired at a network now, management has to consult with the increasingly irrelevant Chuck Todd or Kristen Welker or Joe Scarborough or Mika Brzezinski to get their approval. Uh, this is 31 flavors of insanity because at last check, no one at NBC News had any issue with Jen Psaki negotiating her contract with the network while simultaneously serving as White House press secretary. That was fine, apparently. And by the way, what crime was committed here exactly to your point? Because NBC hired a Republican who actually isn't in the Never Trump Club. That's a bad thing. Uh, MSNBC is now saying that they will never put her right. on their air, at least on Morning Joe. Because God forbid you want to hear anything resembling a contrarian view on a network where the audience is basically reduced to friends and relatives at this point. And it's so <laughs> ironic that this very network, Stu, that screams about saving democracy and the importance of free speech is basically the Pulta Bureau network at this point as far as differing views to your point let's get both sides maybe that could be refreshing over an echo chamber i don't know just spitballing he's absolutely right yep it's a joke <laughs> msnbc anyway. and nbc total freaking jokes man would not want to be rana today would no. not <laughs> i mean i don't know unless she does get a payout in which case it's not a bad place to be you can just go on a permanent vacation if you get a payout for your contract I'm Can you imagine, saying. though, being this hated? Because so many folks on the right, myself included, you you too, like we yeah. have railed against her for months. Oh, ripped her. That, and we're supposed to be on the same team. And now mm -hmm. she's getting ripped on by every, like literally everybody hates her. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Hannity said nice things about her last night. Really? Yeah. I think he so like. She's got one I friend. Think, <laughs> I think he actually, I think he likes her. I think he does. So he's got, oh yeah, I think he's got a few on, uh, she's got a few on the right that are like, she's great. And then the rest <laughs> of us are like, God, why did you take all the money and put it in your face? Cause it didn't work. <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. Um, if you are familiar with the famous person that has a million names, Sean P. Combs, Diddy, Puffy, Puffy, Sean P. Yeah. P Daddy diddly, diddly do he do. his house he's in some trouble he in danger you in, girl you in danger did he <laughs> in danger uh last we heard he is he was stopped in miami and has consulted with authorities there um but there was a lot of speculation that he took his private jet to antigua and that he got the hell out of the united states i don't think that's true they did talk to him in miami he is not I don't think he's been detained, um, but he did answer questions. His house, his enormous, gargantuan house 
was raided yesterday. We'll let Bill Malusian and I think Jesse Waters tell the whole story. Fox News alert. Homeland Security agents raiding hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs, L.A. and Miami homes in connection to a federal sex trafficking investigation. Diddy's been the subject of numerous rape and sexual assault allegations, alleging years of wrongdoing. National correspondent Bill Malusian is here with the latest. Bill. Well, Jesse, our federal sources tell us these raids at P. Diddy's properties were in connection to a federal sex trafficking probe. You can see here heavily armed federal agents could be seen raiding Sean Diddy Combs's home right here in L.A. in the Holmby Hills area of Los Angeles. Several people could be seen being escorted from the property, some appearing to be detained or arrested, some in handcuffs. Meanwhile, in Miami, some federal agents arrived at Combs's waterfront property by boat, conducting a raid there as well. Sources tell Fox this had to do with a federal sex trafficking investigation, but officially, HSI is only saying, quote, Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. Now, last year, three women accused Combs of abuse in two separate lawsuits. The day after the first lawsuit was filed, Combs and the woman, singer Cassandra Ventura, agreed on a settlement. In the second lawsuit, filed last November, Two women claim Combs sexually, uh, excuse me, forcefully drugged them and sexually assaulted them back in the 1990s. Then two months ago, a male music producer also sued Combs, accusing him of abuse, including unsolicited groping a and male? sexual touching. Now, a lawyer representing Jeez. Combs has described that lawsuit as, quote, pure fiction. But, Jesse, the big question is, where is P. Diddy tonight? Well, TMZ is reporting they've just tracked his private jet to Antigua in the Caribbean, though it's unclear if Combs himself is on board that plane. He's he was not um, or if he was, it stopped in Miami and then, you know, he was questioned. So I it's that. <clears throat> did you see how many armed? I know. Like, right. Oh that's that's God. I was, when I was watching that, I was like, how many guys are going into his mansion okay now dhs can you do the border next <laughs> right. maybe that would be helpful i mean, I mean that listen, I'm, I'm not serious. saying i'm not saying that this isn't a good thing because you know you like sex trafficking get it all cleaned up but get yeah. this done and then maybe all you guys like the 50 dudes that are storming his mansion move on and go to the border can you do that and then can we, yeah. And then can we see Epstein's list? That would be great. Oh I'm sure God. he's on it. He's probably, maybe, I don't know. It just, but can we see who's on the list? That would be, because we've never and, seen that. And Why? is this, there's, there's a lot of speculation. Candace Owens leading the charge on this. Here is her theory. She's saying they already knew what he was up to, but he's going to be the fall guy so they can protect the people at the top of the ring. They are raiding his home to hide evidence, not find it. That is how this works. I mean, it's interesting. It's an interesting theory, but that's, it goes back to my point of why can't we see who's on the Epstein list? It's because you know that it's not okay. If, if he is in fact, if there's a bunch of sex trafficking going in and out of his mansion, he's not the only one in Hollywood. There's like a gajillion people that are involved in this garbage. Oh yeah. So, Cause you can't have a ring without. People. Right. Exactly. It, it, so, so who else, who else is going to be arrested? Who else is going to get in trouble? Who else is going to get raided? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Cause you know, you can't, you can't attribute it to, him being a Trump supporter because he absolutely mm -hmm. positively isn't, as nope. we can see from this older clip in 2020, where he made it very clear that he's not very, very clear. Yeah. If this man is elected, we're not standing by no more getting killed. We're not scared of anybody standing up and standing by. We're on the verge of a, a race war. Really? White men like Trump need to be banished. Like that what? way of thinking, it's real dangerous. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, we don't have no choice. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can say what you want about Biden. I, I, I can't say I love the pick either, but hey, we got to get him in office mm -hmm. and then we got to hold him accountable. Totally ignorant. 
Absolutely. So he's super oppressed as evidenced by his home. Yeah, very oppressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd love My to God. be as oppressed as that. I'm sorry, but if I had $110 billion, I yeah. would never want a home that I that is that bit. What do you use all that well, space this is, for? The, I, the first thing I think of this is because this is just my mentality is I'm like, I have to clean that. <laughs> well, you don't. You but would see, not. That's, but see, that's my mentality. <laughs> that's why I'm not that rich. Is because I, fir <laughs> I first, the, my first thought is I got to clean that. How many bathrooms is in that? Oh, oh my God. God. I know. And then that's say, the biggest house I've ever seen. I, think, I know. And then ever. you say you don't clean it. I'm like, oh, that's right. Rich people have other people clean their homes. Right. <laughs> oh, crap. That's right. But can okay. you imagine like you'd be like, oh, I have to go to the kitchen. That's like seven miles down the house. It's, it's, you know what it's I mean? Ridiculous. I know it's, it's it is it's crazy. It's dumb. It's just the craziest, dumbest thing. I know they have 18 wings and and 14 gajillion bathrooms. And it's just it's a lot. It's stupid. I wonder what the square footage is of that house. He square, should take it. Up. Why doesn't he take in illegals? Why isn't he doing that? <laughs> he has plenty of room. Why don't all of these like rich celebrities take in? At least, like, at, I would imagine he could probably house, what, 15 to 20 illegals in there comfortably. Oh, comfortably. My, 20 families is what you mean. Comfortably. It's 17,000 square feet. Oh, my. I can't even wrap my brain around that. <laughs> I can't. I cannot. I mean, I it's just, that's insane. It is insane. It's just, it's crazy. Insane. That's just nuts. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on, because obviously we don't know what we don't know about that story. We'll hear more. As yeah. He's well, I mean, we, all I know is that he's a scumbag. I can he's say a total that. scumbag. There's yeah, my take on question. that. There you go. Total. You know, J-Lo is like whoo, bullet dodged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yikes. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna talk about climate change for a second because there were some videos, even though they're very very old, so interesting. These videos that just sort of popped up on Twitter yesterday. The first being of Al Gore from thirty years ago. Okay, thirty years ago. I will say, and I hate to say this, but he looks good. Thirty year, thirty years ago, he looked good. Really, he looked like oh, God, he looked never, like Superman. I never found him attractive ever. Not even he's in very the, Clark Kenty. You know what I mean? Not my type. Just never I been mean, my for type. for Al Gore though. It's he he, that's good. he's more your type, and I get it. That's fine. But I still he makes me gag. I just, oh my god, I, he's gross, vile. He's, he's a so vile, vile human. And this is actually a bit of a back and forth that was on a radio show between him and Rush Limbaugh. Um, so it's very interesting because remember, like, think of what he is saying how and how long ago it was. OK, so that's 30 years ago. Local environmental problems, regional problems like acid rain. Now we've got a whole new category of global or strategic problems, which include the hole in the ozone layer, which right. now could appear above the United States, global second. climate big, change, big the destruction of the rainforest at a rate right. that means they'll be totally gone in another few decades unless we yeah. stop, you the pollution danger. of the oceans and the atmosphere and the like. These represent brand new challenges that call for a new kind of response. Rush, I've, I've listened to you many afternoons, as you know, uh, and you tend awful. to... I don't want to say you dismiss all of these issues, but at least you dismiss them as having been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, absolutely. I don't think that there's anything conclusive about what Senator Gore said, with all due respect. I think, for example, there is no ozone hole over the United States. Uh, and if we want to get into detailed discussion of ozone depletion, we can. But uh, I, I think, Ted, that there is not a crisis. See, this is the problem I have. I don't think the earth is fragile. I don't think the ecology is fragilely balanced. And I think that the doomsday industry that is typified by members of the Hollywood acting community who say we've only got 10 years left to save our planet, we've got to act now. There's no way, if what these people say is true, that we can solve these problems in 10 years anyway. It's budget time in Washington, NASA's being cut, and I think that this, this fright and, and uh, doom scenario is designed to frighten people. Everything in this country today seems to be a crisis. We can't do anything without it being have, uh, having to face it as a crisis. We don't have any time to think about it. Uh, there are as many scientists, uh, maybe even more, on the opposite side of all of these doomsday predictions. And, and I think that that's they need to be true. listened to. Yeah. Oh, yes, there are. That, that's not true. If I can jump in there, Ted, where the <laughs> ozone hole is concerned, for example, huh? The linkage between these chemicals, chlorofluorocarbons, and the ozone hole is established. There may be 
one one hundredth of one percent of the scientific community that disputes it. Now. Oh no no no! It's far more than that. Uh, Russia, 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 Russia. Had that the environmental movement, as as fueled by the militants who lead it. Uh, I think is the new home of socialism. The I ozone think, hole is threatening to open up above North America, above Kennebunkport. It's and threatening. still, we're not reacting. We're not it's, reacting, you guys. No, it's a, you, so give us more of your money. Yeah. And we'll staple it to the clouds. And then I'll use it for a new home that's not environmentally friendly. I'm Al Gore, and I approve this message. And I will continue to fly all the private jets right. all over the world to still talk about it. climate change. <laughs> still doing it, you guys. He's still doing it. Yeah. God, I miss oh Rush. My he gosh. was the goat. Was Rush not the goat? He was totally. totally. Miss that guy. I He's know. So great. And it's it's like that that clip is like relevant today. They're still doing it. They're still doing this yeah. crap and, and dumb people are still falling for it. It's like every single generation has their environmental whack jobs that are trying to scare and go, oh my God, we're all going to die because there's a hole here and acid rain there and this here and that there. And, and every generation of morons falls for it. Yep. And it doesn't matter that these videos exist showing how long these people have tried to, to been like to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. They don't care. All of these exist there. You can go back. They're there. They're there to look at. And people still look to Al Gore as some uh -huh. kind of expert. You heard what he just said. He was Idiot. like, we're going to lose the rainforest in two decades if we don't do anything now. Well, guess what? Still there. We got all the rainforests. It's My still God. there. I mean, like he should be shamed in public. <laughs> right. And every every bit of money that that man has made from environmental crap that he's done should be taken away. It should be stripped from him. But no, people continue to like fawn all over that guy. He's a complete liar. That guy is a used car salesman. And if we go back to 1978, uh, this is 46 years ago. Okay, 46 years ago. Spock himself mm -hmm. did a documentary Learning about away. the impending ice age, you guys. This gets even more ridiculous when you start to think about the timeline that he's throwing out there and all the scary warnings. And then you think about where we are today. This should send a clear message to everybody that all of these people, all of these scientists are full of shit. Here's yeah. Leonard. Scientists are telling us now is that the threat of an ice age is not as remote as they once thought. Oh, my God. During the lifetime of our grandchildren, Arctic cold and perpetual snow could turn most of the inhabitable portions of our planet into a polar desert. Climate experts believe the next ice age is on its way. According to recent evidence, it could come sooner than anyone had expected. At weather stations in the far north, Temperatures have been dropping for 30 years. Oh, been dropping. Oh, long no free of summer ice dropping. are now blocked year round. There's too much ice? According to some climatologists, within a lifetime, we might be living in the next ice age. I cannot. <laughs> I just cannot. get you with that bullshit. It's crazy. Oh my God. Do you remember when you were a kid, though, and you watched that stuff and you were like, oh, yeah, we're all going to terrifying from the ice. And then the acid rain. Remember the, the acid, acid rain? I was terrified of acid rain because I thought it's going to rain acid, you guys. <laughs> like there's no umbrella that can protect me from that crap because I know enough to know that acid is going to totally destroy an umbrella and then it's going to hit my body and I'm going to like, like melt some, your face off. It's going to melt me. It's going <laughs> to, as a kid, it's going to melt. Like that was terrifying. They tried to terrify you as a kid. You guys remember? Don't you Gen Xers out there, boomers? Y'all remember? It's terrifying. Why yeah. can't we have, why can't we have like a, an actual huge televised public debate about this? Because the, I, I would love to see what some of these climate hysterical people would say to that Leonard Nimoy clip about the dropping temperatures and the ice caps being too thick. What would they say now to explain away those warnings? That's well, those, what I want to know. Those scientists were wrong. The ones now are right. 
See, that's this what is they what, would say. It's such that's what they would All say. of it is bullshit. And so please give me more of your money so we can staple it to the clouds. Thank you. <laughs> God. That's what they would do. And so what, what have we done in the meantime? We've listened, unfortunately, to all of these whack jobs. We've done things like destroy our own energy independence in favor of stupid things like solar farms, which are just a blight on the earth landscape. And look at what just happened in Damon, Texas. Okay. This is absolutely incredible. This is a thousand plus acres of solar panels of this. It's a farm that just got hit by hail. Okay. They are ruined. Look at this. All those holes, all those black dots. Yeah. Those hail. are the shattered solar panels. Yeah. It hails so a lot here. I don't know if people hell? know that it hails a lot in Texas, like a whole lot. Yeah. You got, and so who pays for this? We do. Uh, yeah. We end up paying for this mm -hmm. and it's all useless. And so this is a huge, you know, it's another loss because they're like, oh, this is going to be great energy. So now Texans who are already on a very shaky grid as it stands. Right. So they're and they already get intermittent energy. Now they're wasting all these acres of lands, making them hideous with these solar farms. And now apparently there's like toxic compounds that get released into the to the groundwater oh, because of these shattered solar panels. This is the dumbest thing yeah. ever. And Democrats will be like, Republicans want you to have dirty water. Really? Because <laughs> I feel like this, oh is my God. Where, this is where you're getting the crappy water. You know what I mean? It's like what I, environmentalists, man. I, I just I have such a huge problem with these people because then these are the same people like I'll get on a whole rampage when it comes to these people who are like, you need to go vegan because I want to save all the animals. Really? Because like all the all the farmland that's destroyed to like build all these like almond farms and the avocado farms and all the like the little vegan farms. You don't think that you're killing animals doing that? I mean, this, I could seriously go on a rampage about this. It's just, it drives me insane. All of the environmental whack jobs need to take all the seats. Just take They're, them. They are destroyed. I mean, they are such a danger to the world. Right. Their hysteria is dangerous to the world. It's yeah. all about power. It's all about a power grab and, and the, all about control. And not to mention, somebody said the ocean stuff, all the stuff that's happening mm. in our oceans where all the environmental whack jobs are getting out there and they're killing ocean life. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not talked about nearly enough. It's I mean, just, it, all of it is just such a big scam. It, it makes is. me, it makes me rage. Total grift. Teresa Raimundo, thank you. Teresa says, thank God for those righteous journalists with their high ethics. Fourth Estate is a dilapidated trailer park. It really, it really is. And that they can't see it, that they're so high and mighty. Well, because like, they're better than you. They're, they're morally superior to all of they, us. They believe it, for sure. They totally believe that. Right. She says, Rachel Maddow is something Bill the Cat should spit out. <laughs> <laughs> and oh God, Jersey Diane, cat. Jersey Diane, thank you. She says this Jersey girl stopped using hairspray. Oh my gosh, because like the fear of acid the rain. Ozone and the acid <laughs> rain, remember? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Um, it is definitely time for your first double D. Okay. Well, the first thing is a hugging cat. And that is um something that Mock said that I totally need. Well, right? Because she's been saying she needs a I cat. I need a cat. But I think I need an orange cat, but I would totally, this cat would be awesome. I need a cat that's affectionate, but also kind of a badass, but I do, <laughs> but definitely affectionate like this one. The uh, cats, this is not normal behavior for cats. Okay. Most cats do not hug, hug like this, but yeah. this is amazing. This cat's awesome. Look at him. Look how lovingly he looks at that guy. But he hugs him like he goes right for the hug. And then he's like, fine, I'll pick you up. He does that. Oh, my he's God. Like, he's like, I'm trying to make dinner, but if you want me to pick you up. Oh, my okay. God. And he's like, Daddy, I really want hugs. I, he's I so sweet. Up. He's like, fine. I'll... <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I just, can you even? I can't. I cannot. I need, I need this cat. That's what so a sweet, sweet, sweet cat. I mean, that's really darling. I know. I need one. Somebody said not My on cat the counter. never did that. I, if I had a cat, I'm sure, like, we've had dogs get on kitchen tables. It, our house is like <laughs> freaking wild kingdom. It's out of control. I'm sure that there would be a cat on the I mean, counter. He just will not allow himself to be put down, you guys. He just wants the love. 
Oh God, that is so freaking I precious. Very, very, I know. Cat should not be on the counter. I know. Well, I mean, I don't really cook. Blah, blah, so blah. It just helps your immune system. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I know. It's so funny when I, when I took my, my baby girl to the pediatrician for the very first time, like at her two week checkup, I was so worried because we had four dogs at the time. And she was like, do you have any animals in the house? And I was like, oh God. So she's going to judge me. And I said, we have four dogs. And she was like, oh, that's great. It's going to be great for your immune. And I thought, okay, good. I'm at the right pediatrician. Otherwise I was going to have to fire her. I was going to have to fire her if she judged me. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So the next one is, um, this guy who does really great inventions. Yes. And um, this is an invention that I need because I spend way too much time making beds. And we saved house. it as part of it's in TikTok. So we're um, just a reminder that TikTok. you should be checking mypillow.com slash chicks yes. for all of your bedding and towel and bathroom needs. Um, OK, so here is this is pretty incredible. Let's it get is incredible right to it. OK, here we go. It seems like a lot of work. <laughs> I, mean, I need this in my life. Look at this. This guy did this. He does all these inventions. Joseph Machines is his name. But look at this. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, my God. How? <laughs> this guy has to be an engineer. Like, you know. And then wait. Now, the only thing that's a problem is, well, he has this little sleep mask that he puts on. It puts on for him. <laughs> he has to grab the teddy bear himself. That's but that, the only thing. that is what turns the light off is the grabbing. Oh, it is, the is that did. Okay. So that turned the light off. Okay. The, yeah, it's like, that's okay. So awesome. <laughs> Isn't that great? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it seemed like all of the life. contraptions like take a lot of extra space though. The fitted you sheets. I mean? Yeah. Florence. That's like, I mean, that's a pain to have to put fitted sheets on yourself. Sometimes that's really, really difficult. I need help. With yeah. That. But I mean, it does seem like it takes up a lot of extra space. <laughs> all the things, you know what I mean? <laughs> And like putting that together just seems like a lot of work. (laughs) It does. It seems like a lot of work. Um, Dogs are known to fall asleep in unusual positions sometimes, but I don't know that I've seen this unusual of a position. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God, I aspire to that level of comfort. That is exactly, I want to be that dog. That dog uh, wants you to see all of his business. Yeah, well, he didn't have all a lot of it. The business, business was cut off. It, made, it was a her business. Was it a her? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that. Also, uh, gentle, very gentle eating Tucker is back. And I did not know he had a toddler sibling, but he does have oh. a toddler sibling. sibling. Okay. And this, I just love, 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 love Tucker. You want to try some carrot? <laughs> Can you be gentle? Little kid. Be so gentle, buddy, okay? Selah, this is for Tucker. She's this like, no. no. No, no. I would Tucker. like. This is for Tucker. Be gentle, Tucker. Gentle. The drooling. He's like, I don't. <laughs> gentle. <laughs> Muck is beside herself with this dog. Just beside. <laughs> <laughs> the drool. Look at the mouth and the drool. He cannot. He can't. Why is he like this? Why? He's very gentle. Oh, oh my God. Right. My dog would have digested this right. by now. Right. Like it would have already been pooped out right. at this he point. Even she's like, like, you can right. have it now. Oh <laughs> my gosh. I just can <laughs> two to three business days of being gentle. Said he she will have. <laughs> it's so true. It is so true. I cannot. <laughs> that dog is way too slow. It's I too love slow him for so me. much. I it's love too, him. Oh my God. Slow. Even the toddler's like, come on. <laughs> Just eat the carrot. Okay. Do you remember? I shouldn't like this. It should not be funny because there is, I don't want my dogs to die. Obviously. Never, ever, ever. No. But. <laughs> I mean, we all know that this is inevitable, right? Totally. And so all you can do is you you have to laugh at some dog's lasting that, power. That don't right? want to die. So, that yeah, does. we had one like that. We had one dog that we couldn't believe her longevity. Like, she was amazing. <laughs> Brina was amazing. For a Dane, for sure. She, yeah, she was like 13 years old as a Dane. She did not. She was like, I'm not dying. Screw you. 
Yeah. Things were falling apart. Things were coming <laughs> off of her. I mean, like we, we were like, what's going to fall off her today? She's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and my Ella girl, 14 and a half, you guys, and she is kicking even after her little incident last week. Um, but this absolutely sent me. <laughs> Does anyone else have a dog that will not die? <laughs> it won't die. Look at this creature. Eight, look at her. <laughs> Does anyone else have God a bless her. She does not want that hat on. She doesn't want any of the hullabaloo. No. She She's does like not that, want any of it. That 105 year old grandma, where you're like, what's your like key or your secret to longevity? And they're like, screw you. You know, they just don't, <laughs> right. they don't even want to be interviewed anymore. They're just like, leave me alone. Oh my God. And speaking of just really worn out looking dogs. You're going to notice the dog in the front of this video. The caption says, we had a time last night, but it's the dog in the background that you need to pay special attention to. (laughs) Okay. A lot of people ask me what are... This one. (laughs) We had a time last night. (laughs) We had a time last night. What is that dog (laughs) doing? He's uh, walking on his front legs. I love it. He's like, Woo! Woo! <laughs> Why? Why does anybody get a dog that looks like that front dog? I don't know. Not- Some people do, though. Some people love it for videos like that. Really? Um, oh my gosh. Ellen had a multi poo that lived to be 18 and a half. That's amazing. Somebody That's said they had a dog incredible. lived to be 20 in here. <gasps> It can happen. Unbelievable. Usually it's the small dogs. Big dogs don't live right. that long. Small dogs right. live to be older than dirt. I think I saw a lab on TikTok that was pretty famous for a while that lived to be 19. Which yeah. is just, that's remarkable. Wow. Yeah, that is remarkable. That is just insane. Okay. A long time you've been saying you need a donkey. I think you need a donkey. We want to get, you have to get two. Donkey. We're going to probably get two. We're, get on, the, all the we're on the hunt. We're on the hunt for two donkeys. And there's a guy that has a donkey that was asked, what purpose do donkeys serve? Oh. And he had a very, very good explanation, which okay. I thought was super helpful. A lot of people ask me what our donkeys do here at our oh. little hobby farm, like what their purpose is. And it's really pretty easy to explain. Let me just show you because it's really easiest to understand if you just see it. You see the uh, the soft part right here? This part right here, the soft, mushy part, you take that and you go. (laughs) Yes, that's what I would do. really soft and mushy. Yeah. It feels really great to smooch on and just kind of mush around a lot. That's what I would do. It's probably a bad idea because it teaches them to mouth at you and and bite at you and stuff. You can also just like squeeze (laughs) their (laughs) noggin. They like that. (laughs) The greatest. But mostly their, their main purpose is for this right here, the Yes, <laughs> totally. God, I love see, him. he did his job today. He so did. I'll feed him, I guess. <laughs> I love it so much. That's the greatest. I guess I'll we feed were, him. Oh my gosh, Eric, that's what we want to do. Eric said, my dad adopted donkeys from the government years ago. You can do that. They have, the government will put like out- donkey like donkey rescue? They do have donkey rescues. Yeah, I guess there's like something with the government where they have um, adoptable donkeys. My husband was looking into that. And so we're we're thinking about doing something like that where we can adopt two donkeys together. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you definitely need to do that because they, and they that was so sweet. And they do actually serve a purpose. They protect your livestock. They do, Kathy. They blah, do. blah, blah. They have schmoosh. <laughs> 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 they protect the livestock. They do. <laughs> So sweet. Okay, you guys, we have got to have a conversation. I was like hurled into my HR mode for a moment when I saw this video of this absolute insane person losing their mind on the TikTok machine. And so hide your kids, hide your wives, because what you are about to see is a meltdown that I don't know what possesses people to put these kinds of meltdowns public, but they do it. And it's completely stupid behold i don't know if i'm gonna post this or not but i just need a fucking rant okay universal labor support just fucking called me and the first thing they fucking did is fucking dead name me oh my god love that we're off to a really fucking good start the f word ask if i'm available for a fucking shift 
In nine fucking weeks, they have not fucking scheduled me. Oh my and God. they are trying to. So First of all, mostly everyone who calls from labor support knows me as fucking Max. Not fucking dead name. Getting off to a really fucking good start right there, aren't we? Second, pretty much everyone I talk to knows about my fucking situation. They know that I'm homeless. It's not like I have a bed I can fucking crawl up in and take a nice fucking goddamn nap. I don't have a fucking accessible shower. I don't have anywhere to keep my fucking dog. She has a dog. And they're trying to fucking schedule me on Sunday. No fucking notice. Nobody calls me and says, hey, yo, we want to schedule you now. That's what they literally no, just did. They ask if I'm available to their fucking needs after they fucked me over for nine fucking weeks. Go fuck yourself, Universal. Fuck you for dead naming me. Fuck you for not changing my fucking name on my ID. Fuck you for not understanding my situation. Fuck you for being transphobic. I am so fucking done with companies fucking us over. I am so sick and fucking tired of filling out application after fucking application for loans to get money to get ahead. I am so fucking done. When will these fucking companies learn? Oh my god, this this individual is unhinged. Why would okay, you used to work in HR. Yeah. And one of the things that, first of all, the F bomb, like every other word. I, I, okay, listen, I'm not a prude, but this person is is unhinged, screaming obscenities and like screaming at a company. So like I you're not gonna get hired. You know, it's like I always tell my daughter, everything you put on social media lives there forever. So you better watch yourself when you put <laughs> anything on social media, anything. This individual is like, if you were hiring somebody and you were in HR, like I know for a fact that you have even said that if you were hiring anybody today, because God forbid you had to get into HR again, that would be never again, oh never God, like that would be never first of all, again. It would be hysterical if you had to do that. But if you had <laughs> to do it, you would the first thing that you would do after talking to that individual is you would get out on social media and you would stalk them to see mm -hmm. what have they posted? What have they said? What kind of a person is this individual like in real life? And you would see something like that and you would be like, hell, hell no, nah, I'm running. I don't away. want that drama. I do not want any kind of that drama. That person's and every a psycho. recruiter, I, I mean, I cannot tell you because I posted about this myself and got so many people, obviously, who were like, I would stay away from that person right. like crazy. And yes, of course, not just uh, recruiters, but also hiring managers take it upon themselves to look up people on social media. Of course they do that. Why wouldn't they want to do that? Of course. And so the the funniest pushback that I got were uh, was from people who were trying to say, well, you're never going to find me because I keep all my stuff private. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> That's what you should do. Like, if you're going to have a hysterical meltdown, the problem with this this person is not that they are upset. It's that they chose to post that publicly right? and, and try to seek attention for it. Everybody's going to have meltdowns at some time of their life. Now, granted, mine don't look like that, but... You know, you, you can have emotion like no one's telling you to not feel anger or things, but to choose to have that kind of meltdown and then think, you know, who should see this? The world. Yeah, that shows poor judgment. That's the kind of thing that will never, ever, well, ever get this psychopath hired. It's it's poor judgment, but it's also I, I think it's commonplace these days. I think everybody, uh, not everybody, but a lot of people and especially the younger generations feel like every single emotion that they have has to be broadcasted for everybody to see. Yes. I mean, everything that they do has to be broadcasted. Every emotion has to be broadcasted. Everything has to be out there. And it's ridiculous. It doesn't. You don't have to broadcast everything. I don't need to see what you have for breakfast. I don't need to see you put your makeup on. And I don't need to see every single emotion that you have. Some of it needs to just be private. Like STFU, I don't need to know about it. You know, maybe just yeah. keep some things private. <laughs> 
Well, and a lot of the pushback, too, was from people in that age group who were defending her and saying things like, you you don't you've been out of HR, so you don't know what it's like now. Companies um, are changing and companies are learning that they have to adapt to these Gen Zers emotions. Yeah. And I'm and like, which is if that's the case, then I'm even more glad to be out of that business now because I Mm -hmm. could not deal. But there's another video that talks about what businesses look for and how much they're reluctant to hire people from this generation. Check this out. 800 hiring managers were part of this survey and they were asked about Gen Z employees. Mm -hmm. Well, more than half say recent college graduates are not prepared for the workforce. 53% said young applicants struggle to make eye contact during job interviews. Oh my God. 52% say they're asking for unreasonable compensation. Nearly half say the uh, interviewees showed up wearing inappropriate attire. (laughs) 21% refused to turn their cameras on for virtual interviews and one in five employers say a recent college graduate had actually brought their mom or dad oh to my God. the job interview. Mm. People are uh, bringing their parents to a job interview. That's embarrassing. Yeah. I thought you were going to say uh, when it came to the camera and, uh, you know, the virtual interviews that they were using those filters, like with the dog oh. ears and stuff like that. <laughs> I could see that happening too. Now, those Gen Zers lucky enough to get the job are not starting off on the right foot. 63% of employers say young professionals can't manage their workload. 59% say they miss deadlines often. And 53% report they're frequently late to meetings. And Gen Z has a bad attitude too. 58% of employers say the young job seekers get too easily offended. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. 55% Imagine. percent find they don't respond well to constructive feedback, and 52% claim they have poor communication skills. So that girl better adjust her attitude yeah. and learn how to dress for work and not bring mom and dad to an interview when she has an opportunity for a better job. Yeah, because this is the generation that if you send them this emoji, they get offended. Yeah. And God forbid you say K. If you, yeah. <laughs> They're like, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's offensive huh? this, is, this is that i cannot deal with anything and the problem mm-hmm. is that this is this is who is going to be in mm-hmm. the workforce like right. there's no avoiding it you you can say like as a boomer as a as a gen xer right now if you're hiring you can avoid these people but you can only do that for so long before these this is who is in the workplace and there's right. no getting around it and mm-hmm. we are screwed. There were so many people who responded to me that were in that age group saying, why can't you as an HR person or as the business um, res- respond more kindly and give that person more help? They're clearly struggling. Like it's our job nope. as an employer to mm-hmm. deal with that shit. I'm not nope. in charge of that person's personal life. That's not how a business employee relation wor- uh, relationship works. And the expectation, that is the expectation, is that, oh, you shouldn't be criticizing that person. You should be helping her. Yeah, um, that's whack. No. That is no. whack. I mean, because listen, the, the boomers and the Gen Xers out there are like... <laughs> Do you remember what it was like when we first got out into the workforce? Can you imagine going to your employer and being like, you're responsible for how I feel today. Right. You're responsible. Like I, oh my God. I, right. I just, I can't, I, I cannot wrap my we're brain so around. Like, we're yeah, so we're absolutely, doomed. we are, we are very doomed with that level of, and, but then I look, I look at it and I think who made them that way? Yeah. It was, it's a lot of us. It's a yeah. lot of us. It's this gentle parenting bullshit. <laughs> or or absent parenting where you're just letting your absent. phone do the yes. parenting. Precisely, Mock. Precisely. Yeah. yeah, you're letting your phone and like other people parent your kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, like, just, I cannot. The fact that like there was any pushback against the common sense take, which is, and because the way that I responded to it initially was to say, hey, PSA, I have a whole bunch of years of, of recruiting experience, and this is what you should not do if you want to be hired. If you're looking for a job, make sure you're locked down. Make sure you're not posting crazy shit. That was the point. And I thought, there's really no arguing with that, right? Like, how can no, somebody there argue with that? there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be any arguing with that. Oh, there right. was argument. There were, And there were some other HR people, too. There was, like, some absolute biatch who was like, my husband works for a high-level HR, he's like HR VP at so and so company, and he would absolutely hire this person. And I was like, do it. Good luck. 
report back. Yeah. You know what I mean? See like, how well your see how well your company succeeds hiring right. that crazy lunatic. God. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good God. luck with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because anyway. it used because it used to be that people would walk in and you could be like, this person's a crazy person. I'm not going to hire him. Mm -hmm. And now people feel as though they have to hire them and coddle them and hold their hand along the way. It's not business. Businesses yeah. fail when you do that. It's crazy. And there were the smarties too, who were like, um, I, you know, you, you can't, you can't like not hire that person because she's upset about dead naming or like because of transphobia, they're in a protected class that whatever, like th that aside, this has nothing to do with how that person chooses to identify or the dead naming it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that she chose to post that meltdown, that hysterical, psychotic, right. emotional break. She thought she looked at it, recorded it, looked at it and thought, I'm going to share that. I'm going to share it. Right. That's mm -hmm. that's the unhirable part. And so all the people that were like, you would get so sued if you didn't hire her for that. Why? Okay, try me. Try me. Why? And then, Trans and then <laughs> transgender or no transgender. She's a loony. She's a total lunatic. Exactly. And there were a lot of people who were admitting as hiring managers that were saying, um, oh, yeah, I totally check social media. And if I see um, in the Peter. bio. The pronouns, the pronouns, I'm not even looking at them. Yep. And yep. now that I believe that's it. a little bit sketchy, like I don't on think legal so. rounds. I don't think so. Why? Well, just legally, it, it's a little sketchy. You can yeah, get yourself it? into trouble. Yeah, if you say it out loud. But if right. you just think to yourself, I'm not going to hire these people because they have their stupid effing pronouns in there. Exactly. I mean, if you who who how do you prove that? Exactly. How do you prove well, it? That's, it's, that's exactly right. Because like all the people that were like, oh, you're you're going to you would get so sued. You can't even even companies that have an anti like even if they disallow their recruiting staff or their HR staff to look at social media, even if it's the official policy that you cannot take that into account. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. Does it. And for, yeah think otherwise they're out of their minds. And you out know what? I'm judging you. If you have your if you have pronouns in, in your bio, if you have pronouns in your social bio and your title, I'm judging you. Yeah. Cause why I already know that? who you are. I already know what side of the aisle you're on. I already know who, what kind of a person you are. I already know like a little bit about you, kind of a lot about you. If you have pronouns in your name, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm judging. You. I will say, though, there was one person who commented saying the only reason I use pronouns on my resume is because my name is like a really unisex name. And so I just find it, you know, I just want to make sure that people know like what gender I am. And well, I can may, get that. That may, but, be, like, their this, that may be to their this benefit. this environment, in today's environment, don't, just don't. do that. Don't do that. Because <laughs> it off. may be to their benefit. Like sometimes if you have a masculine name, who cares? So you get the yeah. interview and you show up and you're like, oh, you're a woman. Well, that's cool. You know, like there, there was a person who said, do you, this was like the, the most hilarious comeback is that somebody said, well, do you as the HR recruiter, give the candidates uh the list and all the social media profiles of everyone that they're going to work with and i'm like are you out of your God, mind there's nothing best. stopping you from looking on linkedin to see who works at a company and doing your own research that's but right like why would i why would i do that as a recruiter you know what yeah. i mean like these people mm -hmm. are just entitled psychopaths total brats I, I, it's unbelievable and i this is the future so yeah. buckle total, up <laughs> absolute yeah absolute brats yeah anyway, and, and, and 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 to end too parents need to do better parents need to do better in for raising real. their kids and and preparing them for this kind of stuff and then also maybe not being so coddly yeah yeah, yeah. that's oh my god there's a thought you guys bring anyway. it anyway bring it in it's been a show today. It has been, right? <laughs> really, really has been. You guys <sighs> have a tremendous Tuesday. We will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody.